Hey, what's up guys? Nick White here. I do talking coding stuff on Twitch and YouTube. Check the description for all my information. I do the premium lead code problem solutions on my Patreon. And if you want to reach out to me, you can hit me up on Discord. Uh, try to get back to everyone. Um, this problem is called Find All Duplicates in Array. Got a lot of likes. Given an array of integers. So we got, you know, array of integers. Looks like this, maybe. Um, where... Each element of the array is between the value 1 and length of the array inclusive. Some elements appear twice and others appear once. So each element can either appear once or twice. So each integer in the array can appear once or twice. And each value in the array is between the value of 1 and the length of the array inclusive. Um, so there's nothing below one and there's nothing greater than the length. So in this case, the length is, um, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's nothing, eight, eight is the maximum number an element can be in the array and one is the minimum number. So, um, in each element can either appear once or twice. So you can see four appears once, three appears twice. There's two threes, two appears twice. There's two twos. 7 appears once, 8 appears once, 1 appears once. Okay. Um, find all the elements in the array that appear twice. Okay. How would you do this with no extra space and linear runtime? All right. So that's a little bit of a challenge here. So if you wanted to um, check, y y there's a few ways to do this. You know, maybe if you didn't have the extra space constraint, maybe you did like a hash map. Uh, just count how many will occur twice or just extra loops or something like that. But doing it with no extra space and linear runtime is a little bit tricky. And when we say no extra space, people get confused. If you Whatever you're returning, that doesn't count as space. So we're going to have an output array, like list of integer. Because we have to return a list of integer. There's no other way. So we have to return some form of space. And people are like, hey, dude, that's not constant space. It's like... How would you return a list of integer without some space? Like you need to, you need to do what the method returns, you know? So um, this doesn't count as space. So we make a list of integer output array. This is what we're gonna return, but this doesn't count as extra space. Now to solve this problem in linear time with just this output array, just putting what we need to output in, for example, two, three, cause there's two twos and two threes. And those are the only numbers with duplicates. How are we going to do this? So this is a trick problem. You guys might want to memorize this a little bit. Once you do it, you'll remember it, but it really is a prime example of when you really need, of the reason why during a technical interview, you have to pay attention to the instructions. And if you read Cracking the Coding interview or you watch Gail Lockman McDowell's videos on algorithms, you'll understand that she explains every single part of a problem description is essential to understanding how to solve it. Every part is usually important. They don't include things that don't matter. Leak code might sometimes because they have like some kind of bad, they have some bad problems. I mean, out of a thousand, over a thousand, they're going to have a few bad ones. But generally in industry, when you're getting a real technical interview, they don't include stuff that doesn't matter. So what matters most is this piece of detail here, right? And... This, you know, this should kind of catch your eye because this is kind of a weird scenario, you know. This isn't usually, it's usually like given a sorted array or given an array with, you know, numbers, given an array with positive integers, given an array with, you know, lowercase letters or something like that. But it's not usually this specific, you know. This is very specific, like between one, why would not zero in N, like that's kind of, you know, it's a little bit peculiar. So that's why it catches our eyes. And to solve this problem, here's the trick. The trick is you want to loop through to do this in linear time. We're going to modify this input array. And what we're going to do is we're going to loop through and make the index of what, what you'll notice is the, the value of each element can also be an index within the array. They are all valid indexes. Um, well, if you subtract one. So if you subtract one from any value, it's a valid index within this array. So one minus one is zero, that's a valid index. Eight minus one is seven, that's a valid index. Everything in between those, definitely valid indexes because those are the max and mins. So 
um, you know, in three minus one is two, zero, one, two. You could reference any index. Now, here's how you do it. When we loop through, we're gonna reference the index of the current element's value minus one. So for example, in four, four minus one is three. So we'd reference zero, one, two, three. We're gonna go to that index that the value references and we're gonna make it negative. So here's the trick. When you see a duplicate, so when we see three, we're gonna go to the value minus one, two, index two, zero, one, two, make this value negative, and that's gonna be negative two. And when we see another three, we're gonna check if the value at the index, if the value minus one, so index two, that we change to, if it's negative, that means we already saw a three. Because the value, if we see a duplicate value, they're gonna reference the same index. If you know three minus one is two, zero, one, two, makes this negative. If we check three minus one is two, zero, one, two, if it's already negative, then we already changed it, and that means we saw a three before. So that's the whole idea here. I also have traced this problem out, so we'll go over it in a little more in depth at the end if you don't understand. But essentially, you're making values negative and checking for negative values. So you're, it's a linear loop through the array. I zero, I less than nums dot length, uh, I plus plus. It's really a simple, simple problem, but the hard part is just the trick of under, you know, thinking of this. And I think just doing this problem and having this in your mind, if you ever see this, is really helpful, like tricks like these, you know? Um, so we're gonna take the absolute value of the current number, and then we're gonna subtract one. And then we're gonna say, okay, if nums of index is less than zero, if it's a negative value, we're gonna add it to the output array. So we're gonna say output array dot add index plus one, which is the value. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna say nums of index is equal to negative nums of index. And this is the whole problem. So let's submit this, I'll show you that it works, and then we can um, nums.length, always making mistakes here, nums.length, boom, there you go. So working solution, linear solution, constant space, because we don't count this output array. Now, what, what, I, what I wanna do is paste this trace in here. I traced the uh, input example, and what we're doing is we're gonna take the index, this is the current value, right? We're looping through the array, value by value. We're gonna go four, three, two, it's just a linear loop through every value. We're gonna say, okay, index is equal to nums of i, the value, math.abs, of nums of i, which is just a positive version of the value. So four minus one to get the appropriate index to reference. We're doing minus one because the numbers are from one to the length of the array. And if you referenced nums of eight, that's out of bounds because it only goes up to nums of seven. So we do minus one because every possible value can access an index. So even one, the, va the minimum value is one. So one minus one is zero. That's a valid index. The maximum value is eight in this case. Eight minus one is seven. That's a, just the length minus one. So that is a valid index as well. Um, we're gonna, every loop we're gonna say, Okay, nums of that current element minus one's index. So four, for example. Nums of i is four. Index is four minus one. We calculate that index is three. And we say, okay, is nums of three less than zero? Is nums of three less than zero? Zero, one, two, three, seven less than zero? No. So we make seven negative seven. And this is the next version of the array. And we keep repeating this process. Okay, we're on the next number, three. Three minus one is two. Nums of two is two, zero, one, two, two is not less, so we make it negative two. And you keep going, and what you'll notice, like I said, is that the if you see a duplicate, it's gonna access the same index because the formula is exactly the same. We're doing math.abs and we're just doing the value minus one. So three minus one here is gonna give us index two, and three minus one when we see another three down here is gonna give us index two, but when we do it here, we change the two to a negative two, and when we see it here, we're gonna be checking each time. If it's already negative, we found a duplicate, so we just add this three into our output array. So you keep going, 
ask. Um, you know, you're on, you know, you see uh, nums of i is 3. Then you see nums of i is negative 2 because we modified it. But we do math.abs because we're going to be making values negative. That's why we use the math.abs for the index. Um, so you're on negative 2. Math 2 minus 1 is 1, 0, 1. You make the 3, negative 3 because it's not negative yet. You can see negative 7, 7 minus 1 is 6, nums of 6, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That 3, you make that negative 3 now because it wasn't negative. Now you do. Um, you're on, what did we see? Negative 7. We're on 8. 8 minus 1 is 7. We check index 7. It's a 1. That's not less than 0. You make it negative 1. Now we're on 2. We have seen a 2 already. And since we saw that 2, we're going to be referencing the same index than when we saw it the other time. So we're going to say 2 minus 1 is 1, 0, 1. Oh, look, it's a negative value. So we're going to add this 2 into our output array. And, um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. That was just how it works. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, it is a little bit tricky to understand. I think I had this backwards uh, down here. It's actually... 2 and then 2 and then 3. Sorry, I accidentally put that backwards. But um, yeah, you just trace through the whole thing and then you. Uh, the duplicates will go to the same index. And the first time you go to a number, you make that index a negative. So the second time you go, if it's already negative, you just add the value to that, the current value to the output array. So that's it. That's all you got to know for this. It's a trick problem. Very tricky. Very, you know, I don't even know if I would have. Um, you got to sit and think about it for a while and you got to understand why why is this important and then once you figure that out you're good to go but it just you know sometimes it's not essential to understand every part of the problem but in this case it's like you know really important so just be alert if you can't solve a problem i would suggest really um, I think that's one of the tips that a lot of people give. If you are having trouble solving something, really read the instructions over again and try and find, you know, valuable information like this. So that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know if you have any questions about this process. Uh, I think it's pretty straightforward after I explained it, but, um, yeah, that's it. So thanks you. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you. I love you guys. And I will see you in the next video. All right. See ya.